uh, yes, I'm an engagement practitioner of many years and have been facilitating for, for even, even longer. Um, and I want to give you an invitation in that for the next, say, so for the next kind of 60 minutes, I know we all come to conferences. Come on in. I know we all come to conferences with our projects and what we want to work on and I want to get a good strategy for the group I'm working with or the, or the project I'm working with. But I want us, just for the next 60 minutes, to actually think a bit beyond just your project and just even your, your organisation or your job. Um, so I'm just going to see if we can get this up. Um, because for the next 60 minutes, we're actually going to go big picture. Let's not talk about engagement for your project. Let's talk about how people come together. Yeah, it's not, it's not people talk. Um, about pe how people going together. So the reason why I wanted to do that is because I actually think we need to step back and ask a bigger question about what's going on. Um, if you look, if you look internationally, there is globally something happening around democracy, around how people are making decisions, and I think it's something that we need to kind of take stock and look at um, because. As Abby suggested, you know, trainer, ambassador, board member, I've kind of drunk the IAB2 Kool-Aid, you know, well, well and truly. So I happen to believe that as engagement practitioners, we've got a responsibility in that mix. In actual fact, we, we could have a significant role in, in what's kind of happening. You know, and there seems to be this struggle with, with democracy. But there's also a bit of a struggle with decency. Like if you look just in Australia alone, in terms of how people are engaging, in terms of royals, Royal Commission, like who, who'd, have think, who'd have thought we'd need a Royal Commission about looking after older people, you know, treating them with care and respect, like, like on what planet have we gone, oh, it's a good thing to have a Royal Commission as opposed to why the hell have we gotten to the point of having a Royal Commission. Um, banking, banking, finance, and, and I guess what was interesting, you know, as you look at it, you've got um, royals, Royal Commissions not just in corporate, but also in community sector, like the sector where, where people go, actually, you know, they've got a heart, they've got, you know, that, you know, that, that, that care is kind of naturally embedded, and actually, you know, they want, want to be fine. Uh, there, you know, there are issues, not just with elderly, but with, with um, you know, people with disability. Um, institutional child, child um, childhood abuse. Uh, you know, this was a photo from, I'm, I'm based in WA, and, you know, there was a, a, a community meeting, a, a community meeting, sorry, there was actually a standard council meeting where the mayor got clocked. Like, he got clocked in the microphone and ended up with kind of that contusion. Um, you know, we get kind of levels of, of advocacy. If anybody has, has, hasn't has seen a Netflix documentary called The Great Hack Yet, have a look at that and see the way in which, um, you know, social media is being used to manipulate, um, you know, thinking, and, and, you know, and we're in complete illusion if we think that Cambridge Analytica are the only people you know, playing, that, playing that game. So the invitation for today, thank you very much. The invitation for today is let's step back just a bit from our projects. Let's step back just from the job because actually, as I say, we've all got a role, we've all got a responsibility. The reason? You <laughs> The reason is all well, the outcomes are, are really kind of interesting, and, and I really appreciated um, the the Byron Shire mayor who was saying, um, you know. People mistrust a change in how we do decision making, but the current processes for decision making are leading to massive drops in trust. 
go with, you know, this is 20, this is 48 percent, which is not non are the high are the highest in, in Australia last year. Um, 2016, somebody much smarter than me pointed out, 2016 was the year of Trump and Brexit. So Aussies were obviously feeling pretty good about themselves around about that time. Um, but you know, reality is kind of you know kicked back in. So you know, we, we as as a whole kind of profession, you know, need to look around the room. And for me, I think we need to be asking ourselves, um, you know, could we be part of the problem? Uh, a couple of years ago, there was, there was um, a, a, the CEO of Involve UK, who does engagement over the UK, uh, posed a question to, to the conference, which is, is community engagement propping up a broken system? And I think it's a really interesting one um, for us to explore. Um, you know, there are systems of decision making that are delivering very low levels of trust globally. Australia is not the only one. You know, you look at the globe, and what's interesting is some of the, the international and more autocratic, autocratic countries, their levels of trust are actually going up. So there's something, there's something kind of going on. But it's not going to be all doom and gloom this session. Because yeah? um, I want to explore maybe we're also part of the solution. Um, but maybe we need to look a bit, a bit differently at how we, how we do this. So the three questions I want us to explore today is, are we humble enough, humble enough to consider that as practitioners, as professionals, we might be missing something in how we approach groups and decision making? Um, are we caring enough to actually look beyond our immediate project needs? We get critical of communities coming at us and being greedy and going, well, this is just what we want for us. But how many projects are based purely on that same premise? This is what our project needs. And, and, you know, and so for today in particular, can we go beyond that? And I guess the final question, are we brave enough to consider that we might actually be able to have an impact, a positive impact? On, on, on what's happening on that on that bigger picture on that global scale. So to that end, I want to explore three possibilities, and then I want to play with a model, a possible model for how else we might do discussion or d d deliberation. And it's not going to apply to all your projects. I can guarantee that now. But it's something to kind of keep in, in the back of your mind as you're working with people, and it's something that I've used with groups. So possibility number one. Possibility number one. Do we prioritise the transaction over the human connection? Are we more interested in have your say and give us your top three, your top four, and your top five over actually who is this person that, that, that I'm in front of? And I want to give you a very quick example of this. So you're in groups of four. Can I get you just in pairs um, of the four just to introduce yourself to one other person in your group of four. You, and we'll do this twice, so you'll introduce yourself to the other person as well. But just one other person, just introduce yourself to one other person. If I'm right, my guess is part of that introduction was where you're from, what you do, um, yeah, the, the, func the functional transactional um, exchange of name, rank, serial number. Um, and it has its place, yeah, we do, you know, when we're forming groups, we do want to know how we fit and who we fit in with and I understand all that. But you're going to introduce yourself to the other person uh, in, in the group. But just for the moment, can I just get you to close your eyes? I'm not going to go anywhere, nobody else is going to go anywhere. Nothing's going to drop from the ceilings. Just close your eyes just for a second. And can I get you to imagine that you have absolutely no need for the person that you're about to introduce yourself to, to like you. You have absolutely no need for the person to be impressed by what you do, where you work, how experienced you are. That all you're interested in doing 
is sharing who you are with this person and all you're interested in doing is finding out from that person who they are. And knowing that the person that you're going to be speaking to isn't in any way going to be making judgments about what you say because actually they're interested in finding out about who you are. So I'd ask you to open your eyes and make eye contact with that other person. And just introduce yourself without the name rates or and see if there's a difference. <laughs> Was there a difference? It's interesting, isn't it? So even from the first hello, we send a signal whether we're here for the transaction or whether we're here to, for the connection. That's enough of that. There's more. There's more. There's more you can. There's more you can explore now. But it's, but it, but it's, it's interesting, yeah. Um, and how much we set up rooms, the tables, and all that kind of thing. See. <laughs> <laughs> ever, 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 ever go. Hi. Hey. Yeah. You know what was interesting? The battery was too low. So if you were here, it worked fine. Uh, so yeah. it worked. Okay. Tables. What what does tables do by way of sending a message about the transaction? Distance. It's distance. It's interesting. And, it, and, and which is why it freaks people out in terms of, 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 of these kinds of environments. But for me, there is something about actually being across from another person, another, another, another man. So that's possibility number one, that we construct our engagement too focused on the transaction yeah, rather, than, rather than the connection. Possibility number two, that we mistake comfort for the right answer. Few nods of the head. So that sometimes, as we know, squeaky wheels can get the order. And that squeaky wheel can be in an organisation you're working with or for, as much as it can be out in the community. You know, it can come in the form of, of positional power and authority and a whole range of things. And we end up with decisions that actually make us okay but whether it's actually the decision that we, we need to make. In a, and in actual fact, can I get you to think about the most, the situations in your life where you have learned the most about what's really important to you and what's really meaningful in life and whether those experiences were comfortable experiences or not. So this is difficult, yeah, because engagement often gets, gets sold as we're here to make the peace or keep the peace or you know, quiet down the outrage, um, and you know, and and I'm, and I'm those that know, know me in my work, I, I'm not a an advocate for unfettered outrage. You know, I think there needs to be baseline levels of decency and respect. You know, in, in amongst any kind of disagreement there might be. So think about it, and again, I'm purposely taking a big picture. If there was no medical services, pharmacology hospitals or let's say complementary medicines, traditional medicines, whatever. Like if there was none of that for a month, what could you imagine would happen kind of in the, in, in the, in the community? Or there was none of that for six months? Or there was none of that for 12 months? Just in your groups, take a minute just to discuss what changes might you begin to see in the community if there are none of those things available. Just a brief conversation. But what what changes might you begin to see in the community if there was none of that stuff available? So they'd be able to push prevention. So a bigger bigger move to prevention? Is that population? So population changes? <laughs> <laughs> An adjustment? <laughs> Oh, bigger? Yes, thank you. Birth control, kind of. Yes. Lots of young people. Lots of young people are going off there. But would, would our. Go, Chris. Localised food production would go up. Ah, interesting. 
Interesting. So, so a, a, a bigger focus on localized production. Humans are incredibly ingenious. We love solving problems, but we love solving the problem, not the symptom. Yeah. Um, so all of, and I'm not saying any of this stuff is bad. Yeah. You know, medicine's amazing, all that kind of thing. Um, yet it, it it tends to mean we do less to look after our health because we know they've got it covered. Yeah, so we look for we look for the comfortable option to remove the, the discomfort. But have you noticed that? Like you can remove the discomfort or maybe <coughs> taking a vitamin or whatever, and you find it gives you more energy. It doesn't mean you actually regulate your behaviour as to why you're why you might be tired, we just kind of go a bit harder. Yeah? We're not very good at self-regulating from you know like our baseline, we kind of keep keep shifting it. So do we as a, engage, a group of engagement practitioners have a role to support people to be in discomfort as opposed to just to find a comfortable solution? Possible. That's with the practicalities. Yeah, we want to explore the practicalities. What is it that we're seeing? What is it that's happening? What is it that, that we're noticing? What are the, what's the detail there? The role of Science is important in terms of actually getting to understand the details. So we want to start with that. This, by way, of, just for information, by way of a process, you normally run over two hours. Yeah? So we, we, we're going to be doing a, we're going to be pushing you through in a care and sharing way, of course. We want to then bring it to the personal. So what's the impact? What are the things that you're seeing happen? To you, workmates, community, etc., etc. What's the personal impact of, of this detail? What are we seeing? So, so yes, we want to know what's happening. But we want to know what it make, we want to make it kind of personal. But then, I want to get you. So we've gone down into detail. I want to get you to now step up you know, as, a, as a next step. And I'm going to I'm going to take the whole group through stage by stage. Um, to explore what's the pattern. Like, are we solving, are we in a Groundhog Day? Are we solving the same issue? And I don't mean about the project issue, I don't mean about urban density or whatever, but what's the pattern? Yeah, what's what's getting in the way of us actually making a meaningful difference? And what does what community, what does society get caught in time and time again? Like, what's the pattern that we can see? And therefore, if we can identify a much higher order pattern, we've got an opportunity to go, what's our learning? And this is the really hard question. What are we as a society valuing more than the solution that's in front of us? Yeah. Because comfort kicks in. So we've got to ask that question, what's the learning? And then bring it back down into the detail. Yeah. Bring it back down into okay. So what what can we personally do about it? Does that make sense? So this is where I want to go. I want to I want to explore this and and um, there'll, there'll be a slide which has got some kind of prompt questions as we go through. But let's I don't know. I was kind of I wasn't actually joking. Let's let's play with democracy. You know, if as engagement practitioners we may well be propping up a broken system, um, it's great we'll get employed by it, but you know, let's see if we can put ourselves out of the job. And let's start with the practicalities. So, what is it that you're noticing within within democratic processes, within local governments, state governments, federal governments? What is it that you're noticing and what's happening and what, what are the consequences of that? Like just take about five minutes to just kind of talk about what are the things that you're seeing when it comes to Democracy in Australia and New Zealand for our over the digital crew. But just out of interest, an important part of this process though is that this is not actually a singular conversation. Yeah? This is a whole group conversation. So what are some of the things that people are noticing? Like just are we, are, and are we a small enough group to not have to be roving marks and things? Yeah. Is that okay? So what are the things that we're really doing? And yeah. As you, when you, when you kind of feedback, can I ask you to present on behalf of your group as opposed <coughs> to this is what I said to the group, yeah? 
So this is this, these are the things that we're seeing. So what, what were some of the things that people were seeing? Too scared, like the real desire to, I suppose, be popular. So worry about those um, media polls and political cycles where suddenly popularity is no good. So we've got to do something about that. No, so that short termism kicks in. Yeah, no, I mean, the mayor's example this morning was classic. Yeah, take a bold step, get criticised. Okay. Uh, damned if you do, damned if you don't. What are other people kind of saying? We spoke about a few things, and you know, checking if you guys can say something else. But one of them was um, what the lack of influence still is if you're internal in, in a government mm. or external, and you know, let alone outside of that government agency, to get to get to influence something at the top is yeah, impossible. Nice. And then at the same time, we spoke about the possibility of corrupting the system is still actually really high. Right. And with change of government, you know, and everything that you've worked on, potentially changing that because there's a new person that is that like Absolutely, and and, you know, and and the role of of, of advocacy groups, and lobby groups, and how that mm. how that, you know like people are getting marched. And I don't know if you've noticed, but community uh, have learned that system now, and even at that local level, they're operating like activists and lobby yeah. groups because that, that's what people respond to. So when you see this stuff happening, what does that feel like? When you know we're all involved in this in different ways, you know, what does it feel like? You know, when you kind of see this or experience this, when you're working on a project and and it's all everything's lined up, and then all of a sudden there's a change and you know, there's a new, new new kind of room that just kind of says we're going to start again. Um, what's the impact that you see it having on your work? What's the impact you see it having on your outlook? On life more, more, more broadly. Um, and what's your sense that would need what might need to what might need to change that would actually change how you're feeling? With the time we've got, just focus on the first two. Yeah. How does it feel to be in, in a society where we're seeing these kind of dynamics playing out, the short termism, the the, 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 the lack of ability to have influence, the increased kind of activism and, and lobbying? What does that feel like? What impact does it have? Okay. So let's let's see um, let's see how personal how personal you got, or whether you stayed in the transactional waters. So what does it feel like? Powerless. Powerless. Angry. Despondent. <laughs> Frustrated. Frustrated. Bad shit. Lots of hope. Can you see? You can see why this is such an upbeat kind of process. <laughs> no, but the reality is, but this is sitting under the surface. Right. This is sitting under the surface, driving your decision making, which kind of trying to put on a happy face and all that kind of stuff. But this is the, what else? What, what, what other groups kind of come to? Is to what does it feel like to kind of be trying to work in in that environment? Have a cast. Yes. You've seen the two that they've done with their community consultation session. Yeah. 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 We find it very exhausting on a personal level, and it prompts us to pull in. Nice. Um, but then we looked at it with our practitioner hats on, and if everyone's pulling in because of all of that emotion, um, and yet here we are trying to appeal to people to participate actively to, and think about the greater good and the common good and. Um, and that paradox, I guess, with the, that individual lived experience versus what we're appealing to people on a professional um, way to. Well, yeah, so every, everything about what's coming at us is asking us to, to, to stick to the functional, but actually, everything we know that makes a difference is, is making it personal. And it's tricky, isn't it? Because our approach to the functional is an improvement on the traditional approach to the functional. I'm just going to keep in my box. Um, <laughs> um, is, is, is different to the traditional approach to the functional. So we sort of go, well, actually, that's good because that's better. Yeah? Which is actually number two. Yeah, which is settling for something more comfortable. Interesting. Other groups? We discussed why we were outraged more by some of the 
while we weren't. While we weren't at rate yeah. four, why we felt comfortable. Yeah, nice. So, so, so there can be this despondency, and, and you can end up kind of dropping into this kind of complacency, and, and, and yeah, like what we're like, why we think of world tuition into aged care is actually a good thing, as opposed to going, how the hell do we even get to that point? You know, or, or, or the banking system, or childhood abuse, or every other kind of you know, process. You can feel where it starts to go. So we've kind of touched something really important that, that and for me, it, it, it's confirmation that there's a room full of people, there are people that actually care about decision making, care about other people, care about, about how people actually work and move together, because actually, if we didn't care, we wouldn't have those reactions, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have the disability, etc. So then, the question is then, where else in life, in society, can you see or do you see these patterns of over-the-top decision-making? Decision -making? Do you see patterns where people are looking and feeling disempowered? Do you see patterns where people are feeling quite um, despondent about something but not really able to share that level of, of intimacy with, with, with other people, that level of, kind of transparency? Where else, what other, so we're talking about the political realm at the moment, but where else? So we're starting to now look at, at this from a patterns point of view. Where else do you see that pattern playing out in, in society, in communities? Go for it. But just out, so we're just out of interest, where else, where else are you seeing this? Where, what, where else in society, community, do you see this kind of pattern? In addictions? Yeah. In this, yep, yep. Yeah. And also, we started talking about also um, you know, with refugees, just the sense that there's certain groups of people that just aren't allowed to have a home on earth somewhere that's safe. And that's a bit of the same thing. Do you have one and the sense of house? Yeah. What about others? It's been happening to indigenous communities for years. For years? Yeah, absolutely. Use those words as my mouth. I'm an Aboriginal woman. I see this pattern every day. But I, I say, um, I have a little saying, saying, you know, people say about gold back on history. For me, as an Aboriginal person, yeah, that's history, but it's never changed in this world. So for me, that pattern is never gone away. Right? Yeah. One of the things that we talked about in the book was about um, how institutions in different spaces react to these changes on site. Mm -hmm. And the fact that um, institutions, especially governments, haven't changed while they're on site. So people are more complex, more constrained, more contentious, people are more frustrated. But we're not equipped to be with them. Can you track also what's happening to the group as we're kind of going into this? Can you, like, it's a tricky space to go into because of the overwhelm. Does that make sense? And which is why we don't often go here. Um, and so, but when we're talking about a topic that's fairly general and generic, so it's an easy one, but when you get into topics that are closer to home, I'm um, not to say this isn't close to home for people, but do you know what I mean? Just letting you know, it, like, it, this, this is where people kind of start to kind of get into the, uh, into the overwhelm. Or, or want, to, want to pull the record because because uh, you guys could, like it, it's everywhere. You know, I mean, this happens in within families. You know, it happens within communities. It happens within organisations and businesses within within government institutions. It, it's it's a model for how we how we kind of seem to do life. I actually don't see it as overwhelm, I see it as the opposite. I think it's finally an open discussion about something that's really important yes. that we normally don't touch on that much maybe on like this one. Yeah, beautiful. So yeah, so people will, will, will once you if if it's safe enough to get past the oh my god, this is huge, then yeah. I mean and that's and it, and, and I love that you've raised that because we avoid the oh my god, this is so big, but then but then 
it's lovely to see that that human kind of, the resilience kind of kick in to go, okay, well, what do we even do about it? Like, once it's been named, it's easier to work on something rather than try and second guess and go and, and just work on the surface, if that makes sense. I was, I was working in a group, we were looking at consumer engagement, and around about this time, we actually had a public servant talk about you know, this, this, the pattern of security um, and how much security for him personally drives some of his decision making and why it's easier just to be functional. Like that's, that's, I mean, it was beautiful like, that, that he was willing to share that transparency, but and that obviously triggered some reaction in the room. Um, but that was really then important to kind of harness that so you could kind of see and feel the impact of it. Because it allows us to then ask this next, this next kind of question. So if we're seeing this as a pattern everywhere, and, and, you know, and what was offered that, you know, like we change, we change, change the, the, the labels on the bottles, but, you know, old wine, new bottles kind of thing. So what is it we value more than not having this kind of dissociation of, of power and influence? What is it we value more um, than not having um, people figure out they can actually influence in their lives? What do we value more? Then, then people not feeling despondent and, and overwhelmed. And, like, what is it as society that we value more? Because unfortunately, supply and demand. So what is it? So, so this, is, this is the ouch learning. What is it that we value more? Because if we value that, there's stuff that society values and we do everything we can to make that our, our foundation, our norm. But if, this is, but if the opposite is our norm, we must be voting on something more. <laughs> but what is it? What is it that we're voting more? Like where, did you, where did your group start to come to? I know we haven't kind of got to anything around it or fully form. But what were some of the things people started to explore? So our own level of comfort. Sorry, our own comfort? Yeah, and you know, if something's not directly, you know, if we're all doing pretty well, like, if it's not the issues that affect me personally with my mind, I bother getting involved. Yeah, no, it's huge. So, so, so our own level of discomfort directly correlates to how interested we are. Just like political cycles and just the wanting to be in the election. Like so the desire to be the one in power, yeah, making power, decision, yeah. means we're willing to... Like, we'll the price we pay, it's the price we pay. Keeping, keeping it going is the price we pay for being in power or even having our own job. Yeah. If, we, if, we, if we challenge too much, do we lose our job? The least one's very good for our self image. Yeah, we believe you. about ourselves. And so that's why you know, we allow the refugee situation and the indigenous situation to continue because we want to live with their own equal and even and all of this. We don't have to own the history. Yeah, we solve it. We have to acknowledge that it's not. We're not. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We uh, dropped in that power space as well. We also took that a little other way with the way people comment and put their opinions forward and sometimes that's in that power base so they're going, they put this forward really strongly and really hard to you know. You know yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? Like the, the squeaky wheel you know, rather than, rather than the most insightful, it's, it's the squeaky wheel. I think that's it. We talk around valuing the needs of the individual over the needs of the community. Yeah. And there's more value in myself and my family than what's the community. Yeah, so the me and mine, which, which actually, you know, I feel a bit of a risk statement. It's such a beautiful statement from the Aboriginal community of going, Hey guys, we're, we're ready to walk alongside you. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's just, you know, it's asking the whole community not, not to be in me and mine, to go actually, this is something we can all kind of do together. Um, you know, they've really kind of, yeah, you know, what, what, if you haven't kind of read that as a statement, it's a really, really amazing invitation to the whole community to go, this is an us journey, not just a, a yeah, a me and my journey. We cool. said we value stability. I think that was one that we don't actually know what the other thing what, what the, what the alternative is. Does it create more mayhem or anxiety? Or, yeah. So it's, 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 it's
Yeah. And if I can be really provocative, so we're we're happy to be in an abusive relationship because we don't want others to be out of one. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm not, I'm not yeah. trying to. Yeah, I've worked in the family violence space, and so I'm not, I'm not belittling any of that. But it's interesting, like what we what we choose and what we settle for, compared to what what actually because we want to have a sense of control over what the endowment looks like. Um, so then the final the final question I guess is as much as we might want to as much as we might want to change policy change government um, etc etc the reality is the only change actually starts with us yes yeah, supply and demand it's not until we as individuals and communities start acting and responding differently that the drivers for government policy etc changes so. What do you take from this, and what are the things that you could do? You know, where where does where does comfort grab you? Where does um, the me and mine grab you? And it's not to say you have to kind of become an activist or anything like that. It's going, how do you break free of that cycle yourself? That then might actually contribute in other ways. Brief conversation, and we'll, we'll wrap it up. And move to the wrap. Yeah, of course, you can see. Yeah. 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 I feel like it's really quite natural for the way the human mind works again. Yeah. Well, because we're, we're natural, we're natural, we like the detail. But actually, we do naturally have a philosophical start and then we don't like it. And then, but then people always go, but we're going to make it practical. No, no, and, and bring it back. back to the no, no, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's the action. <laughs> What are other people kind of notice or experience? We, we talked about, Dol, the, the difference, this is fairly similar to, to other models that we work with, but the differentiator for us was the personal aspect. Yeah. The whole has a feel and what would actually, what, what would it take to actually have you respond differently here? Because that gets right down to the, the personal impact rather than the issue. Correct. It, it brings it back to the to the humanity of uh, the impact of, you know, whatever it is we're talking about. So that was... The yeah, power, of, power of lived experience. Absolutely. Because actually we've then got skin in the game. Yeah. And actually you've then got people talking from what they're feeling and experiencing rather than just an intellectual yeah. exchange, which is a really cold place and easy <coughs> easy for us to get into being smart asses and, and clever and cutting and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, very transacting cerebral work. Joel, what's really interesting about this particular model, um, just coming back to the process, because the great insights of this group, but in thinking only about the process. Is it follows, it's a very similar style of questioning to the oriented approach, so an objective, reflective, yes. interpretive, decisional. But there's two layers to the interpretive, which I think is really, really nice. So it brings in this interpretive at a holistic level around the pattern, and then an interpretive around, okay, but what does that actually mean? Mm -hmm. So there's two levels of diagnosis going on before you get the I guess for us, as I said there, we didn't really feel the journey. I mean, I think that might be because the topic was a little bit too big and too vague for us to dive properly down to, and we had so many different uh, angles to comment democracy, so we didn't find the direct common ground, which didn't bring us on the journey. But, it, but we did mention, as a lot of the others as well, we like the idea of going into uh, the personal, but we didn't. Get into, to go into it. Yeah, actually, it was interesting as you guys started talking. I was, I was looking at that, we're going, okay, I didn't make the, the topic of democracy, didn't, I didn't actually make it personal enough yeah. to you guys in terms of the framing of it. Awesome. We were speaking a little bit about how good it would be at the very beginning when you've got everyone in the room mm -hmm. to flush all this stuff out because often maybe we turn up with sort of some of our stuff already pre, pre planned. It never happens. Pulled it off the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> But this would be a different approach that possibly people would be, as you said, uncomfortable with. Yeah. And 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 yeah, you need to, this process takes time and you need to warm groups up to stepping into it. Like there's a whole range of it in terms of safety, but we are done time wise. 
I'm getting a flashing screen, so I'm going to hit Wow, just look at the, and feel the energy in the room. I think we've all had an aha moment, Joel. So thank you. Join me again. Thank you.